Chapter 81 Steal the Fireball Spell, Lusan Chun hurries to take over the two stones from Lin Liran's hands. Though he knows that Miss Lin is strong, he can't stand letting a woman carry such heavy things under his watch. Miss Lin, what do you need these stones for? Lusan Chun is muscular and even he himself is having a hard time with the stone. He can't figure out why Lin Liuran, a delicate woman, can carry them so easily. Lin Liuran smiles, there is good stuff in the stone. You'll see. Lu San Chun still can't get it. Nevertheless, he scratches his head and carries the stone upstairs for Lin Liuran. Commander Kin doesn't seem to be at home. Lin Liuran first goes to check on Bo Jia, who has stopped sweating in black. Also, inside Bojia, is stable now. Thinking of the five kinds of Taoist root Commander Kin talks about, Lin Liran wonders which kind does Bojia belong to. Wait, which kind of Taoist root does herself belong to? It suddenly occurs to Lin Liran that she has been absorbing Ruki from the bead while meditating. Those Puri don't seem to belong to a specific kind. She has never tried to interact with the five kinds of Ki in the world. Days before, when Guan Jing was able to direct the fire key by knitting a print with his hand. Is his Taoist root belonging to fire? An extremely good memory is the bonus of her cultivation. Lin Li Ran now remembers that on the night of fighting, even his hand moved very fast, when Guan Jing didn't just knit the print once because he was interrupted by her again and again. Thus Lin Li Ran actually had observed his gestures for several times. His gestures? were like this, Lin Li Ran moves her finger and walks out of Bo Jia's room slowly. She went to buy jade earlier this day in the hope of studying the magic circle in Commander Kin's jade pendant. She suddenly realizes now that compared with the sophisticated magic circle, the fireball spell when Guan Jing casted that day should be easier to master. After all, she has witnessed the entire process of the spell casting, but the cracked magic circle on the pendant needs to be tested. The Kin's villa is large and his a quiet balcony on the roof. Lin Liuran is afraid that trying to cast the fireball spell may set the house on fire, so she goes up to the balcony. She takes a deep breath and starts to think back of the entire process of Wen Guanjing casting the fireball spell with her eyes closed. He first straightened his middle finger and little finger and crossed the other three fingers of the right hand. His thumb and middle finger were both put on the second knuckle of the ring finger. People who don't have long and flexible fingers may have cramps by doing this. Cultivation is really hard. Lin Li Ran sighs in her heart and starts to do the second gesture. There are a total of 36 handed gestures for the fireball spell casting. With her good memory, Lin Li Ran thinks for a little while and slowly makes all the 36 handed gestures. She finishes remembering and starts all over again. She makes the 36 gestures consistently. Obviously, Lin Li Ran is not a blockbuster, and it will be a miracle if she can pull this off the first time she tries. However, Lin Li Ran is not helping that she can succeed now. After all, she steals the spell from Wen Guanjing which is indeed degrading. It's a nice day. Lin Liu Ran just lies down on the deck chair and keeps pondering. That day during the fight, when Guan Jing's hand moved really fast, he must have practiced the spell thousands of times. Lying on the chair, Lin Liu Ran's body is relaxed, but her right hand keeps practicing those 36 gestures. When Miss Huang calls her to have dinner, she can't stop practicing even with chopsticks in her right hand. Lin Liu Ran smiles to Ms. Huang's astonishment and hurries back to the balcony after finishing eating. She is so keen on these 36 handed gestures that she forgets to ask why Commander Kin isn't home for dinner. Lin Liu Ran is never a smart person. She was able to enter the high school in the county and go to university in the provincial capital all because of her hard work. Lin Liu Ran could stand doing boring physics questions over and over over again. Now, she is interested in the fireball spell, so she doesn't feel bored by repeating those gestures. She keeps practicing till the night comes and her hard work finally pays off. She can do all the 36 handed gestures within a time that only 10 seconds longer than that of when Guan Jing needs. It's a pity that Lin Liu Ran still doesn't master the key of casting this spell. She wonders that does time really matters that much? Maybe not. When Wen Guan Jing casted the spell, he clearly managed to interact with the key around him. But she fails to do this in her practice. So, 
Does fireball spell need the reaction of fire? He, Lin Liuran forgets about the fact that she hasn't figured out what kind of Taoist root she belongs to. In fact, even if she knows about the nature of her Taoist root, she probably will not understand that certain nature of cultivators Taoist root determines the nature of the spells they can cast, if a cultivator in the nature of water wants to cast the fireball spell, he must do it with the help of magic figures or treasures of the nature of fire. Lin Liuran closes her eyes and relaxes herself. Gradually, she feels like everything else in the world disappears and she becomes the only one left. Moments later, she can't even feel herself standing on the ground, like she is floating in the air. Another 15 minutes pass. The floating feeling is gone. Lin Liuran is immersed in this endless night. Street lamps in the capital are on, looking like stars in the dark night. However, it is no match for the view that Lin Liuran is seeing. Light spots start to light up around her after she is immersed in the world. Red, green, blue, gold. Brown, are these the key molecules of the five elements? Lin Liuran is stunned by the view. The light spots are flying in the air like colorful fireflies, which are more beautiful than any lamplight. So the red little elves running around are the key molecules of fire? Lin Liuran finally remembers her intention. She carefully uses a trace of her consciousness to contact with those fire key. These little molecules are having fun and an unfamiliar sense of strangeness comes closer to them. They choose to ignore. Lin Liuran's consciousness is weak and not aggressive because she was hurt a few days before. Therefore, key molecules don't attack her, and certainly, pay no attention to her. Lin Liuran tries to act kinder to get closer to these fire key. A while later, she becomes lack of consciousness and in reality, her face is already bathed in sweat. However, being in the mysterious state, she doesn't even notice a bit of her physical abnormality. As Lin Liuran tries to get closer to the fire key and fails, the bead on her right hand moves slightly. Over the log cabin in the space which Lin Liuran can't get in, a flame comes out of nothing. It bounces for a while, then breaks through the transparent inhibition and enters the cabin. The cabin trembles for a while and settles down without any apparent change. Meanwhile, in Lin Liuran's body, Key which used to be mixed up together now sense the change inside of the bead subtly but passively. A wisp of red key separates itself from the mixture and flows to another meridian like it is not willing to stay with those chaotic key anymore. There are many imperceptible meridians inside of human bodies. Some cultivators may not detect the existence of these meridians in their whole life, let alone traditional doctors in the mortal world. During the long path of cultivation, even those with deep level of cultivation won't make use of every meridian in their bodies. Cultivation has been passed on for generations, and there is a classic system of meditating or spell casting. Most cultivators like these ready-made spells for being easy to remember and understand, and they never think of exploring the function of other meridians. They believe that there is no need to waste time on studying things which are helpless to cultivation. Lin Liuran was a mortal who happened to get on the road of cultivation. Though she has encountered so many difficulties without the guidance of a master, she follows her heart in every move she makes. The fact that she doesn't have a master to learn from also gives her the advantage of being bold. She dares to try every idea that comes to her mind with courage. On today's earth. All five kinds of ki are agitated. Most cultivators begin to practice spell under the guidance of their masters when they are in the level of training chi. They are very careful during the practice in the fear that they may be backfired by the spell if they piss off the angry ki molecules. Lin Liuran is fearless because of her ignorance, let alone the guidance of a master. She steals the spellcasting method from Wen Guanjing. Courageous Lin Liuran fails to direct the fire key. She suddenly senses an abnormality in her body and hurries to wake up from the sentimental state. She wipes off the sweat, rests for a moment and enters the state of inward vision. Why does the red stream of key hiding in an isolated meridian look so familiar? Lin Liuran takes a closer look and finds that they are the same with the fire key she just saw. Lin Liran is excited because this is the first time he inside of her single outer nature. Does it mean that she has the Taoist root of fire? Number. Even if she just wakes up the nature of her Taoist root unintentionally, 
key inside of her should all become red. Why there are still lots of mixed key remaining aloof. Lin Liuran thinks of a possibility which makes her lose the motivation to keep practicing the fireball spell. Cultivators with single nature of Taoist root are talented. For example, Jiang Minayu had the nature of water and wood, but these two natures could complement each other, so her quality was relatively good. As for Lin Liuran, she has detected that she has the nature of fire, but there are still lots of mixed key in her meridians. Lin Liran is disappointed. Looking from the amount of mixed key inside of her, it seems that there is more than one nature waiting to be awakened. God, how bad will her quality be? Chapter 82 The Phoenix Hairpin, How Hard Is Cultivation? In the long history of cultivation, Ancestors in the high level have summarized some key points of cultivation from their life experience for the younger generation. Talent, spell, gilixa, magic weapon and money, none of the five key points is dispensable if you want to stick to the path of cultivation. There is no need to say much about talent. Without the Taoist route, one can never set foot on the path of cultivation even he is rich beyond comparison. Also, the quality of one's Taoist root determines whether he can make it to the higher levels. One in a million people may have the Taoist root. Back in the good days of cultivation, people in the level of training qi would not even be considered as cultivators. The gap between the level of training qi and laying foundation excluded those trainers with four or five natures out of the real world of cultivation if they didn't have some good luck. Except for core zones where qi is abundant. Mountains which most cultivators live in have similar thickness of key. However, if you own a high level spell book, the time of refining key would be halved or shortened even more. As time passes, two persons with similar talent will grow apart. Key elixir can serve as an impetus to help you break through the bottleneck. It can shorten the time needed for cultivation or improve the result which is necessary for cultivators. A powerful magic weapon can protect cultivators on the long road of cultivation. As long as mortals don't die out, there will always be new cultivators. However, most magic restoratives need thousands of years to grow, and supply always falls short of demand. Disputes over several hundred year old magic herb happen more often than not. A powerful magic weapon may save your life in the disputes and even help you win the magic restoratives. It certainly can serve a double purpose. Money is absolutely important. Though cultivators can live longer than normal people, they can't stand the bother of going to find materials for refining works every time. The state of Huexi owns a vast territory and abundant resources, and it will be a waste of time to do so. At this point, the importance of money is highlighted. If you are wealthy enough, you can just stay at home and wait for cultivators who need money to come and deal or exchange with you. Of course, money mentioned here is nothing like the paper currency we use today. After having the thought that her quality may be bad. Lin Liran is no longer in the mood of practicing the fireball spell. She returns to the guest room and doesn't feel like trying to refine weapons. The phoenix hairpin she buys with 50,000 yuan is lying on the table. Its unique shape is attractive. Dragon and phoenix are both traditional totems of the state of Huaxia, which can be seen everywhere in the modern time, let alone back in ancient times. In some dynasties, Dragon and Phoenix were exclusively for imperial use. Normal people were not allowed to use items with the two totems. Still, bands couldn't stop women from loving beauty. Since gold wares were too showy, they chose to use silver or pearls to make jewelry, sometimes inevitably in the shape of a phoenix. The antique that Lin Liran has bought, which looks very much like a fake, has a unique design on the top. It is a phoenix with two heads. Maybe one of them is male and the other is female. Lin Liuran can't tell the gender of the two phoenixes so she puts the idea behind her. The clerk of the jade store was kind enough to alert her, but Lin Liuran didn't buy the hairpin because she sympathized with the old lady. Unlike jade, pearls are not easy to hand down for generations. The more pearls are worn, the shinier they will become. Therefore, antiques made of pearls are hard to judge, except for the crowns of emperors and queens. Even the most well-read collector may have a hard time figuring out the origin of a single pearl. Generally, 
Jewelry made of pearls will only be marked by the store because there is no proof of their origins. The hairpin Lin Liran has bought is in good condition. There is not even a little trace of decay on it. It is so new that on the first sight, most people will think it was made last year. What's more important is that the pearls are blue. Come on, does natural blue pearl really exist? No matter what, Lin Liran has bought it. She didn't simply believe the old lady's words that the hairpin was an antique. The reason was that she sensed a faint stream of he in it, though she is a rookie, she is certain that jewelry with he are always good. So, she has bought something that is worthy of more than its price, right? Lin Liran's gloomy mood finally gets better when she realizes that she has bought something from the cultivational world using paper currency of the state. However, what on earth is this double-headed phoenix hairpin made of blue pearls? Lin Liuran stares at it and she can't see anything special. Is there a chance that the hairpin used to belong to a female cultivator so that it has absorbed a bit of ki? Lin Liuran overrules this idea immediately, let alone the fact that female cultivators never wear jewelry made by the mortals. Ordinary materials don't have the ability to contain key. What is it? Can it be something like the jade pendant? Lin Liuran decides to try. She directs some key inside of her and infuses them into the hairpin. She has instinctively avoided using those red fire key because the pearls on the hairpin are blue and watery, which may resist the fire key. Key flows into the phoenix hairpin. As the blue glow becomes brighter, something amazing happens to the hairpin. First, the two phoenix heads split up, then the body of the hairpin starts to rip right in the middle. If the breaches on the phoenix heads and the body of the hairpin are not so neat, Lin Liuran may think that she has broken it, the hairpin is not just splitting, it is also growing bigger. Lin Liuran frowns. She is not sure whether she should keep infusing key in it. She is concerned that the hairpin may be an extremely dangerous one-off bomb and the way to ignite it is to infuse it with key. She can't be this unlucky, right? Lin Liuran stares at the double-headed phoenix hairpin. No. It has already split into two single-headed phoenix hairpins. Lin Liuran looks around the elegant Kin's villa and thinks, if it is a bomb, there is nowhere that I can throw it away to. Lin Liuran thinks it over and decides to try again in the open field. She draws back the key. Both of the two phoenix heads jump up and down like they are letting off the steam. Then they reluctantly close up and return to the double-headed hairpin made of blue pearls. The craft is so wonderful that it excels the nature. Chapter 83 Villa on Fragrant Hills Lin Liuran has known all about her quality through practicing the fireball spell, and she doesn't have the mood to study the magic circle for now. Also, the mysterious phoenix hairpin may be dangerous. Lin Liuran now can only work with the two raw stones she has bought. She has promised Mutanen to give him refined jade. She never plans to cut the raw stone open, so she just uses the bead as the converter of ghee and refines the restless smoke inside of the raw stone into peaceful and absorbable ghee. Lin Liuran is certain that this is the easiest way to get rich if she isn't afraid of being beaten up by other cultivators when things are exposed. Imagining herself being captured by other cultivators and being forced to make refined jade for them, Lin Liuran trembles and comforts herself that she doesn't need too much money, instead, the freedom and her life are the most important. Lin Liuran calls Mu Tannen and informs him that he can come and get the stone any time. Then with a flash of mind. She enters the space of the bead which she hasn't taken care of in a long time. The seeds of fleece flower she planted before now have broken through the soil. The sprouts all huddle together so Lin Liran has to build a shelf for each of them with the bamboo poles she put in the space before. This is a big project. Now she regrets for the dense planting. While sticking the poles, Lin Liran comforts herself that her hard work will be rewarded by a large amount of fleece flowers instead of just one. Vines of over a hundred fleece flowers will definitely intertwine into one if she doesn't split them up. After she finishes building shelves for the fleece flowers, Lin Liuran notices that all six of the ginsengs have borne little red fruits. The ginseng fruits are ripe just in time because there happens to be an empty field. Lin Liuran, who is in the joy of harvest, doesn't notice that a flash of red glow just circles the inhibition over the log cabin for a second and goes away. Staring at the vegetables piling up like a hill in the space, 
Lin Li Ran thinks that she should take some out for everyone to eat. It's such a waste to just let them lay in the space. Fireball spell, magic circle, quality. Lin Li Ran has a lot to think about today. She transplants the fleece flowers, accelerates the ripening of the ginseng seeds, plants them in the empty field and transports herself out of the space. She is happy that ginsengs are unlike vegetables which the plant will die after she accelerates the ripening of the seed. It's stress free that she doesn't have to choose between ginsengs and their seeds. Lin Li Ran is eating a cherry tomato which doesn't look like cherry because of the evolvement. She fails to notice that logically, empty field in the space has long since used up or else she wouldn't have planted those fleece flower seeds so densely. Still, there is an empty field for her to transplant. The area of the space seems to secretly become bigger today. After putting a bunch of vegetables in the kitchen, Lin Liuran returns to her room with tomato in her mouth and prepares to do some cultivation tonight. The tomato is juicy and fragrant. When Lin Liuran passes by Bojia's room, Bojia, who is still in a coma, appears to be attracted by the smell of the tomato. Bojia's eyes are closed for nine days, but her eyeballs roll under the closed eyelids. Cultivation is hard. Lin Liuran has known all about this since she heard the words of the crazy cultivator from Commander Kin. If her quality is bad, why she is destined to set foot on the path of cultivation. Lin Liuran casts a glance at the bead on her right wrist. It is so mysterious that Lin Liuran always has the feeling that it is alive, no matter it chooses her willingly or not, she can't let it become an ordinary bead and be considered as a brighter pearl after hundreds of years. Lin Liuran sighs. She adjusts her attitude and starts to do her daily meditation. When there is no jade around, the bead has no choice but to absorb the thin and agitated ghee from the air. It keeps some for itself and refines the rest of ghee and exports to Lin Liran. Something is different today. The bead doesn't convert all the ghee into the white ones inside of Lin Liran as usual. It singles out the fire ghee and exports them together with the mixed stream of ghee. With her breaths, ghee from the bead flow to her meridians and the fire key flows to where it should be. This is certainly confusing. A night of cultivation. Lin Liuran feels refreshed when she opens her eyes. The frustration of practicing the fireball spell all changes into the comfort of cultivation. Lin Liuran goes downstairs light-footedly like a bird. She greets Commander Kin, who is reading newspapers, Miss Huang, who is preparing the breakfast, and Lu San Chan who is practicing boxing in the yard. Everybody can see that Lin Liran is in a good mood, and under her influence, they all feel that today is going to be a nice day. Mu Tanan arrives at the villa right after Lin Liran finishes her breakfast. He greets Commander Kin and loads the stone on his car, why there is only one. First, Lin Liran doesn't want to make her efforts look cheap. Second, humans are greedy. If she gives him two stones for the first time, she will have to give more in the future, or the favor may turn into hatred. Lin Liuran is sitting on the front seat. Mu Tanan smiles at her from time to time, which creeps her out. Anyway, why she becomes friends with Mu Tanan all of a sudden? Lin Liuran is still confused about this. Mu Tanan drives an SUV today, if not, there may be not enough space for the stone. Lin Liuran doesn't even recognize the brand of the SUV. Then she thinks of the fact that she has seen him driving several different cars, also, he promised to lend her 100 million yuan when they were in Rilly. Is the Mu family really a family of cultivators? The family seems to be powerful. Lin Liuran has to remind herself that even with Mu Tanan as the intermediary, she should be careful while dealing with the Mu family. The car goes straightly to the suburb. Lin Liuran looks at the direction post and asks, Fragrant Hills Park? Mu Tanan nods. My family house is on the Fragrant Hills. Lin Liuran is speechless. Well, the Mu family is powerful, for sure. Everyone who knows a little about the history of the state of Huexia will be familiar with the Fragrant Hills. A temporary imperial palace was built here in the Jin Dynasty, 1115 to 1234. As time passed, the palace was expanded for several times, by the reign of Emperor Qianlong in Qing Dynasty. 1636, 
1912, it was renamed as Ginny Eye Garden. There is even an article titled Red Autumn Leaves on the Fragrant Hills in one of the textbooks of elementary schools around the country. Now, Mutanen tells her that his family house is on the Fragrant Hills. Hey, though you're a family of cultivators, you don't have to take the public land for private use. This is beyond belief she is not jealous but the feeling of enclosing a hill to do whatever she wants is really exciting. Mutanen glances at her, you can't say anything you like as you can eat whatever you want. What do you mean by taking the public land for private use? The current public land was donated by my family when our country is first established, okay? A, is that so? Lin Liran is shameful. She keeps her mouth shut and looks out through the window. Mutanen is in a good mood since he just made Lin Liran speechless. He hums a song and drives along the mountain road in the opposite direction of the park. Somewhere on the back hill, Lin Liran sees a carved iron gate in European style. The white pillars are set among flowers and trees which appear to be elegant and delicate. Mutanen snaps his fingers and the door just opens slowly. He drives in and says to Lin Liuran with a brilliant smile, Welcome to the villa on Fragrant Hills. Villa. Lin Liuran is astonished. Is the place really where cultivators live in? Don't cultivators usually live in log cabins? And what on earth is that music fountain? Chapter 84 Seniors in the level of laying foundation. Master, welcome back. As Mutanen stops the car in front of a villa in European style, a bunch of girls in maid outfits come out and greet him all with one voice. Lin Liuran has a vague feeling that she is about to have a mental meltdown. Master, maid outfit, I percent exclamation mark. Mutanen notices that Lin Liuran is annoyed so he hurries to shoot a glance at those naughty girls in order to tell them to go away. He smiles awkwardly. This is where I live. My grandpa lives up on the hills and he barely goes out. I'm afraid that we have to walk to him. So, she comes here to save a life and she has to carry the stone up to the hills? Although Lin Liran is benign, she feels a little displeased. Unlike Liu Zheng who is a careful observer, Mutanen doesn't notice Lin's displeasure at all. After all, Lin Liran is an adult and she can't just leave. She gets off the car asks Mutanen to carry the stone and heads to the hills. The path up the hills is narrow, and it is very wet and muddy due to the rain last night. Lin Liran is light-footed, so her shoes barely touch the ground. Carrying a heavy stone, Mutanen is not able to employ his gravity. Defying Kung Fu, and his white leather shoes handmade in Italy are covered in mud soon. Mutanen looks at Lin Liran who seems relaxed and easy. He gnashes his teeth and thinks cultivators are cool. Should he badger with grandpa and ask for an opportunity to follow the path of cultivation? Lin Liuran turns around and looks at charming master Mu's embarrassment caused by the mud. Her displeasure changes into a glimmer of amusement. She holds back her smile and keeps walking. There is no crossroad. The two of them walks fairly fast and they arrive at the end of the road within a few minutes. A small straw hut surrounded by fences covered by morning glories is on the hill. Mountain fog Glingers, making the hut fairy. Lin Liran is relieved. This finally looks like the place where cultivators live in. She doesn't try to hide her steps, so people inside of the hut already notice her incoming. Miss Lin, please don't blame me for not greeting you earlier. This indeed is an emergency. Please come in. A voice comes from the hut. It sounds a little weak, but quite loud. It's my grandpa speaking. Carrying the stone, Mutanen is out of breath. He is trying to hide this because he doesn't want Lin Liran to look down upon him. Lin Liran checks her clothes and makes sure there is not a stain on them. Then she goes ahead and pushes the unlocked door open. There seems to be some smoke surging inside of the room. Cushions made of straw are lying on the ground. The hut looks like a place for spiritual retreat. It suddenly comes to Lin Liuran that she can also make some cushions out of the weeds in her space. Grandpa Mu is not alone in the hut as Lin Liuran used to imagine. Another old man is also sitting on a straw cushion. One of the old men is sitting in the back of the other with hands on the back of the man in the front, which is exactly like the healing scenes in TV shows. The old man with silver hair sitting in the back opens his eyes and nods to Lin Liuran while she comes in. Lin Liuran assumes that he is Grandpa Mu since he and Mu Tannen look alike. Since Grandpa Mu has the strength to heal another man, Lin Liuran believes that it's not him who needs the refined jade. So, 
The other old man who is sitting with his legs crossed needs the jade to extend his life. Lin Liuran tries to probe the old man with her spirit, and she senses a strong power. Lin Liuran is shocked to discover that even the old man who needs to be healed is a cultivator in a much higher level than herself. Are they both seniors in the level of laying foundation? Lin Liuran dares not to pry anymore. She waits quietly with Mu Danan who is carrying the stone. Less than an hour later, Grandpa Mew gradually stops the healing. His face looks pale like he has just been through a serious illness. Mew Tannen hurries to put down the stone and helps his grandpa to sit on the wooden chair. Then he helps the other old man up and supports him to sit on another chair. Unlike the ethereal and aloof Grandpa Mew, the other old man seems reckless, even his cultivation is deep. Well, his temperament is like Commander Kin's when Bojia was hurt. At this moment, Lin Liuran is not aware that in the world of cultivation, it is very impolite to pry on others' cultivation like she just did. She is lucky that the two seniors forgive her. Grandpa Mew rests for a while and says to Lin Liuran like he just comes to himself, Miss Lin, though you have a top master, your own quality is enviable. I notice earlier that you are one step away from completing the level of training chi. Within 15 years, you will enter the level of laying foundation. Lin Liuran catches the keywords of Grandpa Mew. Is she really going to complete the level of training chi? It is the first time that Lin Liuran has a clear knowledge about her level of cultivation, which is worthy of her long trip to be here. After hearing this, the other man who is resting his mind with eyes closed opens his eyes. He checks on Lin Liran from head to feet and says, Mew, I bet you that she will enter the level of laying foundation in ten years. According to the decreasing rate of key in the world, she may be the last female cultivator in the country. The last female cultivator in the level of laying foundation? Lin Liran is glad that both of the seniors think highly of her but she is not satisfied with the level of laying foundation deep in her heart. If there is a chance, she will never stop pursuing higher levels. Lin Liuran wants to go further on the path of cultivation so that she can see more of the world. Except for when Guanjing, who is skillful in spell casting, Lin Liuran has never encountered with anyone else in the world of cultivation. Hearing that the two old men just make a bet on her, she doesn't know what to say in reply. Just in time. Mew Tannen comes out of nowhere with three cups of hot tea. Grandpa Mew says while stroking his beard, this is the Die Hong Pao tea picked from the seed tree on Mount Wuai. Although it is nothing like the Ki tea in the old cultivational world, it's the best we can find in the mortal world. Miss Lin, I hope you like it. Die Hong Pao tea picked from the seed tree on Mount Wuai. Can it ever be bad? If the words aren't said by Grandpa Mew, Lin Liuran will definitely think that he is showing off. Is this senior Lin Liuran can't finish the sentence because she is not sure about her judgment. She lowers her head and drinks the tea. As expected, unlike the evolved vegetables in her space, the tea is tasty with its unique fragrance. Is there a chance that she can plant some tea in her space? After the refinement of the space, the Die Hong Pao tea filled with Ki may be qualified as the Ki tea Grandpa Mu just talked about. Before Grandpa Mu says anything, Mu Tanan answers, This is Grandpa Go. I asked you for the refined jade to help Grandpa Go heal. The man referred to as Grandpa Go by Mu Tanan says with a bitter smile, My old bones really have bothered you all. I may as well return to dust. Grandpa Mu laughs, again, that year. If it wasn't you that snuck into that tiny country and was hurt by that stealthy man who claimed to be the emissary of Oki, you would never get this chronicle injury. Oki, isn't it a creature in the Japanese myth? It is real. An idea comes to Lin Liran's mind. Is there a possibility that some characters in the myth of the state of Huexiu are actually cultivators? However, Grandpa Mew is certainly smart enough to bring about the reason why Grandpa Go is hurt. Does Grandpa Mew say this to make her sympathize with Grandpa Go? Lin Liuran drinks the tea with embarrassment. She is speechless because of the trick of a senior in the level of laying foundation. Chapter 85 Age of Cultivators Lin Liuran thought that the two old men were collaborating with each other. However, Grandpa Go doesn't agree with Grandpa Mew as she expected. He says, Mew. 
Don't you know how old we are? It's awkward for us old men to talk about this in front of the younger generation. Just drop it. Grandpa Mu is embarrassed. Lin Liuran feels great respect for Grandpa Go who is seriously injured and waiting for a cure. If she were in his position, she would not be able to stay calm. The thing is, Lin Liuran herself is just an amateur. Even Grandpa Mu, who is in the level of laying foundation, cannot get the injury under control. She doesn't believe that she can, with the key she refines when she has not completed the level of training chi. How ridiculous. If it was not for the bead, she wouldn't manage to save Boji's life. Lin Liran puts down the teacup, Grandpa's, I have brought the jade here. But, the injury of Grandpa Go. Grandpa Go waves his hand, it's already a big favor of you to give me the priceless jade for free. How can I make my injury your responsibility? Mu and the others did have other plans when they tried to get closer with you, but they only did this for my well-being. Miss Lin, please don't mind. Mu Tanan is embarrassed just like his grandpa is. However, Lin Liuran is not surprised by the whole planned thing. She is not a spoiled girl and she never believes that there is unprovoked love or hatred in the world. She noticed the problem when Mu Tanan suddenly changed his malevolent attitude. If she does have a mysterious and powerful master, she can absolutely ignore the invitation of the special department and the request of the Mu family for her help. A saying goes that absolute power prevails over strategy. If she is under the wings of the most powerful master, it will all be up to her mood whether she takes notice of them or not. Nevertheless, Lin Liran is the only one who knows that she doesn't have a master who is in the level of bearing essence at all. Before she becomes strong enough, she will have to leak some information about her so-called master so that no one will have doubts. Now, hearing Grandpa Go's words, Lin Liran switches the topic, the fragrant hills is a picturesque place and the grass and trees here are filled with ki. It is a nice place for cultivation in the mortal world. The Mu family really has made a good choice. Noticing that Lin Liuran tries to change the subject, Grandpa Mu asks, I guess that it is the first time Miss Lin has come to the fragrant hills. How about us two old men give you a tour around? Lin Liuran gladly agrees. It's so much better to enjoy the scenery than just sit still. Mu Tanan's mouth crumples. What about me? Grandpa Mu gives a ferocious glance at his grandest un. Mu Tanan dares not to badger and he leaves with the teacups. Grandpa Go stands up first, Miss Lin, Mu and I are much older than you. How about we call you Liu Ran? Lin Liu Ran lunges to her feet and nods, of course, Grandpa Go. You can call me whatever you want. Mu and Go here are the only living high-level cultivators in the state of Huaxia. Not only do they have deeper cultivation, they are also much older than her, so what they call her is really not a problem. The three of them walk out of the straw hut and go up the hill along the path. Tall sumakers block out the sun. Fragrant hills will be taken over by those red leaves in autumn. It's winter and leaves have already fallen on the ground. Lin Liuran likes the feeling of stepping on the thick layer of fallen leaves. Grandpa Mu notices Lin's interests in the ancient trees. He explains while stroking his beard, some of them were planted during the reign of Emperor Qianlong, and they are at least 200 years old. 200 years. The trees have grown taller and stronger during 200 years, and what about her? Will she manage to enter the next level of cultivation after 200 years? Or will she get stuck by the curse that no one in the state of Huexia can surpass the level of laying foundation? Seeing that Lin Liran is somehow downcast, Grandpa Go thinks for a while and says, Liran, I notice that you are a little depressed. It's not easy for a young woman like you to have such deep cultivation. You should be proud of yourself. Why are you in low spirits? Is the age of 27 considered as young in the world of cultivation? Lin Liuran is ignorant of many common senses in the world of cultivation. Seeing that the seniors are kind, she makes up an excuse in her heart and plans to get some information from them. She says, seniors. You both know that I used to be an ordinary person in the mortal world, and I entered the world of cultivation accidentally. Thus I have no idea about many taboos or common senses. I heard from Wen Guanjing that even cultivators' lives have an end. If one has the chance to enter the level of laying foundation, how long may he live? Lin Liu Ran's accidentally refers to the space in the bead, but Mu and Go take it as the proof of their guess. 
Lin is picked by a master who cleanses her bone marrow and almost helps her complete the level of training Qi. They believe that the mysterious master really believes in Lin Liran, and they don't think that it is abnormal that Lin doesn't have common sense about the world of cultivation. Instead of answering Lin's question, Grandpa Mu asks with a smile, In your opinion, how old am I? Lin Liran check on him. Grandpa Mu seems healthy and strong and he is just as vigorous as Commander Kin. He is in his sixties, isn't he? Lin Liran tells her answer. Grandpa Mu bursts out of laugh. Serious as Grandpa Go is, he can't help smiling. Cultivators in the level of training Chi can at least live 100 years, and those in the level of laying foundation can live till they're 200 years old. Masters in the level of bearing essence have a lifespan of 500 years, and as for those in the level of gathering vitality, they can even live 1000 years, according to the books. We have no idea what will happen above gathering vitality. Grandpa Mu laughs and points to Grandpa Go, he is 127 years old. I'm a bit older, and I have just celebrated my 130th birthday last month. Both of them are over 100 years old. They certainly look younger, let alone Grandpa Go, who is injured. Grandpa Mu seems to be more vigorous than Mutanen. This may be the difference between cultivators and the mortals. The age of 27 is very young in the world of cultivation. Lin Liuran is used to being called an old leftover lady. She suddenly realizes that she is still young, and this makes her glad. Chapter 86 Fascinating Spells Seeing that Lin's spirit is lighted, Grandpa Mu smiles and says, You have given me the jade for free. If I don't return the favor, I believe that my cultivation will be impeded. Liuran, is there anything you want? Just say it to save me from the devil inside. Lin Liuran doesn't know much about the impediment in cultivation so she fails to realize that Grandpa Mu is not telling the exact truth. She thinks for a while with her head tilted, I have recently learned a simple spell of casting fireballs, but my master is not around to give instructions. Can you give me some advice? She has promised to go to the Knight of Bermuda with Wen Guanjing. She can't let others know that she can't even cast any spell, or she may expose herself and puts her safety on the line. Lin Liuran is anxious that Grandpa Mu and Go seem to be surprised that her master never teaches her spells. She tries her best to stay calm. Lin Liuran is aware that she should make up an excuse, but she will have to tell more lies to cover up a lie, and her lies may be revealed someday. Thus she decides to take a chance, even if someone knows, she may as well take her parents and Liu Odong to live in the deep mountains and come out after she becomes strong enough. Still, this is her plan to face up to the worst. In fact, Grandpa Mu and Go are surprised not because that they have seen through Lin Liran's secrets but that her request is not comparable to the value of the jade. The fireball spell is commonly seen in the world of cultivation which is already declined. On the contrary, the jade Lin Liuran refines is of direct use for human body. It is beneficial for Grandpa Go's health, and it can even help cultivators save a lot of hard work. Grandpa Mu asks seriously, Liuran, do you know how valuable the jade you give us is? Lin Liuran is astonished. Is the jade valuable? It only takes her several minutes to refine a jade, and she doesn't expect it to be so valuable in the eyes of a senior in the level of laying foundation like Grandpa Mu. Thinking of the fact that Lin Liuran just steps on the path of cultivation for a short time, Grandpa Mu says, you are so lucky to become a cultivator and you haven't experienced the hardship. Since Ki in the world started to decrease and became agitated a thousand years ago, most cultivators have had to spend three times longer than before to refine the Ki they absorb. Although cultivators in the level of laying foundation can live 200 years, those with normal quality will be dragged by the time-consuming process of refining Ki. The agitated Ki also makes the magic restoratives useless, and there is not much elixir which can assist cultivators. Thus, no one can enter the level of bearing essence anymore. You can see now how valuable the jade with Ki which can be directly absorbed is. Grandpa hesitates for a second while saying no one can enter the level of bearing essence anymore because he thinks of Lin Liran's mysterious master. According to his prediction, Lin's master has to be in this level. Seeing that Lin Liran is paying close attention to his words, Grandpa Mu understands that her master hasn't informed her of the hardship, 
However, the master has the refined jade, so the problem which bothers most cultivators may be nothing for the master. Certainly, there is no need to say things like this to influence the cultivation of his beloved apprentice. Grandpa Mu stops talking, and Lin Liuran becomes anxious. Her knowledge on the current situation of the world of cultivation is not enough, and she is desperate for more. Meanwhile, Grandpa Go takes out a booklet and gives it to Lin Liuran. Seeing the words spells of the five elements written on the cover, Lin Liuran is flattered. She has a hard time believing that she just gets the spell book she longs for so easily. Grandpa Go notices her surprise and explains, don't be amazed. This booklet only records some primary spells. You can have it if you like. Thank you so much, Grandpa Go. Lin Liuran expresses her gratitude sincerely. The primary spells are valuable to her. Especially, the first page happens to record the fireball spell she tries but fails to cast. Noticing Lin Liuran's happiness, the two old men both praise her for being pure and virtuous in their hearts. How can a primary spell booklet account for the favor of life extending? They want to give something else to her in return, but they are struggling about what gift the apprentice of a master in the level of bearing essence may like. Grandpa Mu leaves the thought of returning the favor behind him for now and makes several gestures with his right hand. Four mans rise up from the empty ground. Lin Liuran senses the fluctuations of he but she can't figure out what Grandpa Mu is going to do at the moment. She stares at his handed gestures without blinking and relaxes more to sense the key fluctuations. Lin Liuran has realized from her failure of casting the fireball spell that she may have ignored their key fluctuations while casting spells. She refuses to let this opportunity pass. After a few seconds, the four mounds take shape gradually. It turns out they are one table and three chairs. Ordinary people may think this is magic, but Lin Liuran can feel the moving brown key molecules on the ground. Looking at the table and chairs made of mud. She realizes that the brown key must belong to the nature of earth. Grandpa Mu, the mud is wet and soft. We can't sit on it. Lin Liuran assumes that Grandpa Mu hasn't finished his performance, so she says something ironic on purpose in order to push him. She wants him to have a sense of accomplishment so that he can cast more spells. Lin Liuran loves to take more free spell lessons. Grandpa Mu smiles. Lin Liuran's little trick cannot fool him at all. Nevertheless, he sees her as a nice junior, and he likes to spoil her. Watch closely, Liuran. Grandpa Mu starts to make another gesture with his right hand. His actions are slow and completely different from the spell he casts to make mud into table, or when Guanjing's fireball spell. A sharp and serious sense comes out with every single move he makes, and golden key molecules in the thin air are reacting to him. Grandpa Mu looks careful and not as easy as he was when he casted the earth spell just now. He shouts, spell complete, go. A golden light comes out of his palm. The metal key collapses with the earth key and generates sparks. Fire starts to burn around the wet mud table and chairs. He is drying the mud table and chairs. Lin Liuran stares at the sparkling flame. Her heart is beating fast. She is 100% sure that Grandpa Mu doesn't direct any fire key. Where does the fire come from? Grandpa Go coughs. He can't bear the sight of Mu tricking the young woman with the myth of spells. After all, Mu is an old man, and the woman is a young cultivator. Mu, though metal and earth will generate fire, the spell can only be casted by cultivators above the level of laying foundation. Don't try to trick Liuran. Chapter 87 Happy Events Grandpa Mu doesn't care at all and explains to Lin Liuran, your master may have told you that the nature of your Taoist root decides the magic weapon you can use and the spell you can cast. There are five elements in the world and they mutually promote and restrain each other. As long as you can enter the level of laying foundation, you will be able to use the science between elements to make some interesting changes even if you don't have certain natures. Take me as the example, I have the nature of metal and earth, so I can direct a bit of fire key to cast the spell by the collision of metal and earth. You should not underestimate the little bit of fire key. It may save your life when it is necessary. Taoist root decides the spells one can cast. Lin Liran bears Grandpa Mu's words in mind. The key inside of her used to be mixed up and neutral, and a stream of fire key was distinguished when she tried to cast the fireball spell. Still, 
most of the Ruki inside of her are still neutral, are they waiting for her to discover what else nature she has? So what nature does she have? Lin Liuran is in doubt. She thinks of these 36 handed gestures engraved in her mind and begins to make them unconsciously with her right hand. She has been practicing the gestures for long, and speed is no longer a question. Moments later, Lin Liuran is about to complete the spell, if she completes them like this, she will definitely fail again. Before Lin Liran finishes the gestures, Grandpa Go shouts out, guide your key into the gestures and elicit response from Fire Key. Lin Liran was thinking that she might fail as well this time. Hearing Grandpa Go's words, she reacts instinctively, as if the Fire Key in her meridians are summoned, they flow directly to her right hand and fill her fingers. By the time Lin Liran makes the 35th gesture, the air around her is lighted. She can feel clearly that the molecules of fire key are gathering. When she completes the 36th gesture, Lin Liuran looks to the fingertips of her right hand. A ball of flame is floating and beating slightly. She has managed to cast the fireball spell. Lin Liuran is filled with joy, but she is not dizzy with the success. She lets go of the gesture and the fireball disappears. Lin Liran then closes her eyes and starts to review the feeling of reacting with the fire key. Grandpa Mu and Go are surprised with Lin Liran's power of understanding. They can see that she is a rookie for she doesn't even know that she should direct key while casting spells. However, can a rookie comprehend the key of spell casting only through a few words of Grandpa Go? Also, she is so fluent in making hand gestures. Her fingers are born to cast spells. They think of Lin Liran's experience. She becomes a cultivator by chance. Though there is a powerful master to cleanse her bone marrow, her quality is extremely good as well. Is the nature of her Taoist root pure fire? Seeing that Lin Liran just casts the fireball spell so easily and she is the apprentice of a senior in the level of bearing essence. Grandpa Mu and Go assume that Lin is a gifted cultivator with single nature. Of course, immersed in the success of her first spell, Lin Liuran is not aware of the misunderstanding. When she opens her eyes again, she finds Grandpa Mu and Go sitting on the chairs made by Mu just now and nodding to her. Three cups of fragrant tea are on the table. Lin Liuran sits down and sips the tea. Its fragrance refreshes her mind. Tea is really the best for cultivators. With the booklet of spells and the key point of spell casting, Lin Liuran is in no rush to study. The opportunity of drinking tea with two seniors in the level of laying foundation is precious. So why not take a break for now? However, Lin Liran is destined to be busy. Her phone rings when she is listening to Grandpa Mu talking about his understanding of cultivation. It is a strange number. Lin Liran picks up. Words from the other end of the phone make her brow relaxed. Then happiness crawls all over her face. She hangs up the phone. Grandpa Mu asks why she is so happy. Lin Liran answers with tears in her eyes. Please excuse my humble behavior. My best friend is awake just now. After the incident, Lin Liuran's best friend, Kin Bojia, becomes famous. After all, Mu and Go look at each other and figure out at once who Lin Liuran is talking about. In this case, Liuran, you should go back. Though this is a rare chance for Lin Liuran to spend time with the seniors. She always puts family and friends above everything. Lin apologizes to Grandpa Mu and Go and goes down the hills. Mu Tanan comes out from nowhere. Grandpa stares at him with a smile and asks, Why don't you send her off? Mu Tanan laughs, It has been arranged. Grandpa, I want to be a cultivator. Please say yes. Grandpa Go frowns. Emotions flash in Grandpa Mu's eyes. He says, you bastard. The family rules are made. Cultivation becomes harder and harder, and our family can't be so stubborn. You have given the opportunity of cultivation to your sixth younger brother. Why do you want to cultivate now? Mutanen answers cheekily, I regret. At the worst, I shall just give up the supply from the family. Can you teach me spells? Grandpa Mu shakes his head. Mutanen stamps his feet and disappears into the forest. Grandpa Go coughs and says, you should tell him the truth. Why let him bear grudge against you? Grandpa Mew smiles bitterly, my grandson seems to be playful, but you know clearly that he is the most arrogant one. If I tell him the truth, 
who knows what his stubbornness will make him do, I'd rather that he hates me as long as he can live his life in peace, live his life in peace, Grandpa Go sighs, he is not sure that this is what Mutanen wants, anyway, what should we give to Luran? Grandpa Go's question baffles Mew, right, what should they give in return so that they can get closer to her, Lin Luran jumps off the car of the Mews and runs toward the Kin's villa, Miss Huang opens the door for her with a big smile, they are all at the upstairs, Miss Lin, Lin Luran nods to Miss Huang and goes upstairs, the door of Bo Jia's room is not closed, Commander Kin, Liu Zheng and Lu Sun Chun are all here, Lin Liu Ran looks around and sees the woman in white standing by the window, her white gown is fluttering in the wind, making the woman look like a fairy, seeing is believing, Lin Liu Ran now is sure that Bo Jia really is alright, Lin's eyes are filled with tear, Kin Bo Jia turns around, stares at Lin, and rushes at her, hey, did you eat cherry tomatoes in my room last night? Volume 3 stars in Bermuda, Chapter 88 Bermuda, the Bermuda archipelagos on the North Atlantic Ocean is the overseas territory of the UK, financial industry and tourism there are developed, and it is the world famous offshore financial center which is known as Tax Heaven and Company Heaven, a direct flight from the state of Huexia to Hamilton, Bermuda lands at 3 p.m., a group of Asians walk out of the airport quickly, but they still draw the attention of many people around. The Asians in the group are all tall and slim, huge sunglasses can't cover the fact that they are good looking. Two tourists carrying heavy bags are amazed, Mike, are those people models from Asia? Is there going to be a show in Hamilton? Look at the beauty in the front. Walking in the front of the group, Lin Luran's face is mostly covered by her sunglasses, but her sharp and vigorous temperament is out. In the view of the locals. Only tall beauties with full lips from the US or Europe are stylish like this, Lin Liran perfectly eliminates the aesthetic difference between the East and the West. English is not a problem for cultivators. They can perfectly understand what the two tourists just said. When Guanjing is an ordinary looking man, in foreign eyes, he is humble and unimpressive. When is not wearing sunglasses, he casts a glance at Lin Liran and her vigorous temperament and feels too inferior to joke. Cars have been arranged. Several low-key MPVs with signs saying expedition are waiting at the exit. In the heaven of tourism where luxury cars fill the streets, the MPVs are actually moderate. People from the state of Huexia certainly follow their doctrine of the mean everywhere they go. Lin Luran sits down on the front seat and takes off her sunglasses. Some of her companions are the young and talented ones in the cultivational world of the state of Huexia. However, they seem to be afraid and don't want to sit in the same car with Lin Luran. When Guanjing has no choice but to bite the bullet, he sits on the back seat, and the driver starts the car. Brother Wen. I heard that we are not the only ones who come for the operation, is that right? Looking at Wen Guanjing who is sitting straight on the back seat, Lin Liran doubts whether this is good or not, since her teammates here know that she has met with Grandpa Mu and go on the fragrant hills, they all start to act like that they want to talk to her but doesn't dare to disturb. This makes Lin Liran reappraise Mu and Go's position in Huexia's world of cultivation. There is no guarantee that the operation in Bermuda will be a success. Lin Luran doesn't want her teammates to fear or disdain her. Harmonious team relationship will be the key for everybody to stay alive. When Guanjing has adjusted his attitude, after hearing from the department minister that Lin Luran was about to complete the level of training Chi, he exclaimed over her luck, when used to be the best cultivator in his generation and the woman who only cultivated for a few months just exceeded him so easily. When Guanjing was malcontent that she exceeded him only because a powerful master helped cleanse her bone marrow. However, from Master Mu and Go's comments on Lin Liran, when Guanjing knew that Lin Liran could make such achievements not only because she was talented, but also that she was a woman of good conduct. When Guanjing's dissatisfaction turned into enlightenment, perhaps Lin Liran, who tried so hard to avenge a mortal, was inherently different from the others. Thinking of these, when Guanjing answers Lin Liran instantly, right, cultivators from a dozen of countries will be here, including the United States, the United Kingdom, Russia and Japan. Lin Liran says nothing in reply. She closes her eyes and starts to rest her spirit. In fact, 
She keeps stroking an exquisite blue double head phoenix hairpin, which is glowing blue under the sunlight. Unlike days ago, the hairpin seems to be unlocked now, and it is no longer a normal hairpin decorated with pearls. When Guanjing notices the key fluctuations on Lin Li Run's hand along the trip, this is also one of the reasons why other team members don't dare to get closer to Lin Li Run, though they are attracted by her beauty. It is said that the hairpin in her hand is a weapon, and God knows how powerful it is. It's best not to mess with the apprentice of a mysterious master. Hello. Lin Liu Ran's phone rings, and she picks up. Liu Ran, have you arrived? Bo Jia's vigorous voice comes from the other end of the phone. Lin Liu Ran is happy every time she hears Bo Jia's voice. People will cherish things they almost lose. Bojia was badly injured and she nearly died. Lin Liu Ran is just glad that Bojia is all right now. Lin Liu Ran's cold temperament fades away. She answers with a smile. I just get off the plane. How about you? Have you met with my parents? I have taken Mr. and Mrs. Lin, as well as Liu Odong, to the villa on Mount Qingqing. My grandpa will be around. So you can set your heart at rest while you're in Bermuda. Bojia stops talking and calls for Mr. and Mrs. Lin to say a few words to Lin Lee Rowan. Lin hears in the phone that her parents say the international call is too expensive. Liu Odong takes the phone and says, Sister, from such a long distance, Lin Lee Rowan can feel that her family misses her so much. The night of Bermuda opens early and she has no time to go home before coming here with a team from the capital. She hasn't returned home since Bojia's incident. Lin Liu Ran hangs up the phone after reminding Bojia of something else. She can't do anything about her parents' frugality. They can't meet in person, but the phone call just set their minds at rest. The villa on Mount Qingqing Bojia talks about is the gift from Grandpa Mu and go in return to the Jade. Lin Liu Ran hasn't been there by herself. It is said that the leader of Qingqing school is also a cultivator in the level of laying foundation who is friend with Mu and Go. Lin Liu Ran is not worried that Ellie may do something when she is away. She is afraid that the Zhu family may find out that she is the one who hurts Zhu Yaoi and they may go after her family. After all, the Zhu family is powerful. It won't take them too much effort to make trouble for the Lin family. Now, her family is living in the villa on Mount Qingqing, which is so much safer than before. After practicing the spells of the five elements, Lin Liu Ran has a clearer view on the power of cultivators. Checking on the phoenix hairpin in her hand, Lin Liu Ran puts it into the space with a flash of mind. From the back seat, when Guan Jing notices that the blue glow is gone, and then he discovers that there is nothing in Lin's hand. He can't control the contraction of his pupils, as the apprentice of a powerful master, Lin Liu Ran certainly is capable of using some ancient tricks. Chapter 89 Play Rough Lin Liu Ran and her companions check into a famous five-star chain hotel. It is not because the hotel bill is at public expense, but because they are cultivators. Let alone the support of their wealthy families, they can afford to rent a regular room at any luxury hotel as long as they occasionally lower their position and take some private jobs. If the group of young cultivators are elegant as white cranes, Lin Li Ran is outstanding like a red crown crane among the white ones. Pushing the revolving door open, they enter the grand hall of the hotel. The check-in procedure is already done, so Lin Li Ran and the others can directly go to their rooms. At the corner of the hall, a man and a woman have been staring at Lin Li Ran since she came in. Greediness is flashing in their eyes. The beautiful woman has brown hair and brown, shiny eyes. Her nose is high and her skin is smooth. She is not like other foreign beauties who only look good from a distance, generally, she is a real European beauty. Dana, she is my type. What an exquisite Eastern beauty. The woman with brown hair says to her companion while swirling the champagne in the goblet. Besides greediness, possessiveness is also twinkling in her eyes, it is the nature of human to appreciate beauty. Still, the brown-haired woman seems to be hard to get along with since she wants to possess things or people she likes at the first sight. The man called Dana has curly hair, his skin is fair, and his figure is slim. The delicate details on his sleeves and shirt add a sense of European nobility to him. Not all the good-looking men in luxurious clothes can be noble. Dana looks like a cultured man even when he is sitting there casually. Appreciation and greediness are also in his eyes but he is more rational than the woman beside him. He says, Crystal, 
Have you lost your mind because you haven't been outside for long? Look closer at the man beside her. Crystal raises her eyebrows, she notices Wen Guanjing who is walking behind Lin Liuran, and says carelessly, this is St, I can't believe you were once defeated by such an unimpressive man. Nerve being touched, Dana only frowns a little bit and takes a sip of the champagne. Dana doesn't fly into a rage, which is quite gentle of him. Certainly, if you look closer, you can see that his eyes just become colder. St. The man is referred to as the sticker by the superpower circle of Europe. Being defeated by ST is not something shameful even for Dana, who is always so arrogant. If Crystal must try, he won't try to stop her. This woman always acts so haughtily with her high lineage. Lin Liuran is aware that two persons keep staring at her the moment she enters the hall, which makes her very uncomfortable. While walking to the elevator, she follows her instincts and sees a foreign woman with brown hair sitting at the corner and raising the glass to her, the woman is so frivolous. Thinking of the conversation she overheard, Lin Liuran now has a misconception that she is teased by another woman. This cognition displeases her. When Guanjing notices Lin Liuran's hesitation and follows her eyes, he immediately recognizes his old acquaintance, Dana, and sniffs. Lin Liuran raises her eyebrows and asks, why? You know them. When Guanjing says carelessly, they are nobody. Just the representatives of the UK. Though he says that they are nobody, when Guanjing's poker face can't hide the truth that these two persons may not be like what he says. The moment the door of the elevator shuts, Lin Liuran starts to make gestures with her right hand. A small fireball gathers on her fingertip and it rushes out quickly and quietly. The fireball is almost invisible under the golden light in the hall. Crystal hurries to step back but fails to dodge the fireball coming to her. It lands on the glass in her hand. Bang! Champagne splashes. Dana rushes aside like a ghost. Crystal never thought that the fireball was targeted on the glass in her hand so it was too late for her to dodge it. Champagne is all over her face. The door of the elevator is closed. Standing still, Crystal is covered by champagne and her advanced ready-made clothes are ruined. People walking in and out of the hotel are all checking on her, for a woman from a noble family, this is more embarrassing than being wounded. Crystal's face is pale. She doesn't seem to be angry but her dangerous eyes give her away. Seeing that his companion is made fun of, Dana hands a tissue to Crystal and says with a smile, Is this what they do in the state of Huaxia, play rough? Crystal glares at Dana and says gladly, I haven't met such a special beauty for so long. She is mine. Crystal licks her red lips. Her sexuality is accompanied with intimidation. The elevator goes straight up. Most people can't resist the feeling of looking down from above so the fancy suites are mostly on higher floors. This arrangement suits the mental activities of customers. Though Lin Liuran seldom acts recklessly, she never intends to be a coward. She feels that it is appropriate to give warnings to people who disrespect her. Back then, she played rough rapidly and stealthily. Except for when Guanjing, no one around her noticed her moves. While the elevator going up, Lin Liuran sees Wen Guanjing's hesitation. She comforts him in a low voice, they are from another nation, and they will become our opponents in the event later. This is just the start. Brother Wen, don't worry too much. Wen Guanjing, whose nickname is St, certainly will not mind. After all, Lin Liran is their secret weapon, and he is only concerned that their opponents will be prepared if her power is revealed so early. Hearing Lin Liran's words, Wen Guanjing thinks that she is right. The event will begin in a few days. If they are about to turn against each other, their power will speak for themselves. So why pretend there is peace now? When Guanjing stops talking, they arrive at the top floor and plan to grab some food together at the dining hall after cleaning up. Lin Liuran uses the room card to open the door. Lin Liuran is quite satisfied with the simple but luxurious decoration and the refreshing style of the room. Standing by the large French window, she can see the beauties in bikinis who are lying on the beach and having a sun bath. Sea waves come one after another and become higher and higher. People on surfboards rise and fall along with the waves. If she didn't come here with a mission, 
This would be a nice place to spend a vacation. There certainly is a computer in the suite. Lin Liuran enjoys the view of the sea for a bit longer and goes to the study and turns on the computer. She types in the Bermuda Triangle in an unfamiliar browser and hit center. Over 20,000 of search results are displayed, and Lin Liuran clicks into a website randomly. Chapter 99 of Bermuda. There are many wonders of the world around 30 degrees north latitude, and the Bermuda Triangle is one of them. In a small conference room, when Guanjing draws a circle around a sea on the map projected on the screen, it is the Bermuda Triangle area. Every one of us must have heard of the Bermuda Triangle before. It is called the black hole of the earth. Ships sink people go missing and planes crash here. And this is where our operation will be located. When Guanjing finishes talking and looks around, everybody is paying attention to him because of his seriousness. Brother Wen, I do have heard about this. However, there is another story that most of these missing cases are made up. Some people say that the frequency of missing cases happened around the Bermuda Triangle is actually lower than that in other high-risk seas. Is that right? This is the other girl in the group talking. She wears a long dress in the style of ancient costume in the Tang Dynasty. She has an oval face and almond eyes, and she looks cute just like a woman in traditional Chinese paintings. It seems that this girl is popular in the group. Hearing her words, when Guanjing even shows a gentle smile, he answers, Sister Li, what you just said is exactly the official story. Truth is, with the impending of the Night of Bermuda, Shipwrecks in this area happen much more often than before. Sister Li blushes. She appears to be embarrassed by her dumb question. Lin Liuran lowers her head and says nothing. The official story. No wonder people from so many countries are here for the event. There is obviously a cover story. So what on earth is the Night of Bermuda? When Guanjing doesn't know what Lin is wondering, so he goes on with his speech. Let's ignore the information on the surface. In fact, a secret land is hidden at the bottom of the sea in the triangle area, it is a land for cultivators. A secret land. Lin Liran is interested. Things are going exactly as she expected. In the first place, when Guanjing said that she could keep whatever she would find, Lin Liran started to suspect that the so-called Knight of Bermuda was actually the treasure-seeking operation for the world of cultivation. A secret land? Sister Li's eyes are shining, brother. Will there be treasures in the secret land? When Guanjing nods, not only treasures, opportunities of entering the level of laying foundation may be waiting for us there. All the living seniors in the level of laying foundation in our country got their opportunities during the last event. Opportunities of entering the level of laying foundation? Now, besides Sister Lee, many male members of the group hold their breath. Some of them may have certain knowledge on the Knight of Bermuda, but it is the first time that the rumor has been confirmed. Sister Lee says in surprise, the opportunity of laying foundation. Brother Wen, are you talking about? Lin Liuran is also interested. Grandpa Mu and Go said that she was about to complete the level of training Chi. Therefore, it is the best time for nobody else in the group but her to come to the event. When Guanjing looks at Lin Liuran, seeing that she gets more interested, when can't hide his smile, Sister Lee is right. The opportunity I am talking about is of course the foundation laying bellus. The foundation laying bellus. Sister Lee covers her mouth but she can't cover up the gladness in her eyes. However, Lin Liuran is quite disappointed. She thought that the so-called opportunity might be some spells. It turns out to be the foundation laying bellus. Anyway, why are they excited about the foundation laying bellus? Isn't the bellus commonly seen? As novels say, foundation laying bliss is hard to refine. Lin Liran frowns. She was hoping that she can make progress in the medicine refining work with the plants in her space. Everybody looks at Lin Liran as she is a moron. When Guanjing breaks the ice, elder sister Lin, since Ki in the world became agitated, most of the magic elixirs had died out. Also, the formula of making foundation laying bliss was lost. Thus it will be impossible to make the bliss anymore. The world of cultivation values real power. Except those who are relatives or from the same school, cultivators rank their seniority based on power. When Guanjing calls Lin Liuran elder sister, which is another reason why the others don't dare to get closer to her. Lin Liuran feels strange about this and insists, brother Wen, just stop calling me an elder sister. Anyway. Why was the formula of foundation laying bullets lost? This is another story in the world of cultivation. 
If you're interested, elder sister Lin, how about I tell you later in private. Everyone is focused on the secret land in Bermuda, and Lin Liran hates to interrupt. Since when Guanjing is not going to hide this from her, it will be only a matter time. The problem is that when Guanjing still insists in calling her elder sister, he is so stubborn. Lin Liran thinks, if she can find the formula of the bolus, she won't have to compete with the others for the bolus during the event. Brother Wen, now that we may have the chance to find foundation laying bliss in the secret land, why doesn't the department send more people? Lin Liuran has noticed early that though when Guanjing said that this was an important operation, but only young cultivators of the state of Huexia have come, and the group just has 10 members including an outsider. There is clearly a reason behind this. When Guanjing smiles bitterly, the secret land is strange. Only cultivators in the level of training chi can go in. Besides, there are not only foundation laying bliss which can help us enter the next level, but also potions used by foreign cultivators. After years of negotiation, our country has earned 10 places to enter the secret land. Sisterly laughs. In this case, we shall just pick more blueses in there. When Guanjing turns off the projector and says seriously, Sisterly, Key in the secret land are unique. Besides Belusas and Elixirs, there are lots of monsters which we have to work together to kill, or else so many countries will not have to send their best men here. However, neither the traps, nor the monsters, are the most dangerous, but cultivators from other countries. A hundred years ago, during the last time the secret land opened, twenty-five cultivators from our country went inside and only five of them made their way out. From the history of the eight power allied forces invading the state of Huaxia, you should know who killed those twenty cultivators. Lin Liran is absorbed in thoughts. According to Wen Guanjing, apart from those who died under the claws of monsters, a hundred years ago in the secret land, most cultivators were killed by people from other countries. Why does this sound strange? Lin Liuran lowers her head in order to hide her emotions. The story was told by cultivators who came out alive, so those who committed murder for the treasures might not only be foreign cultivators. She should look out for herself. Wait. What did Wen Guanjing say just now? Only cultivators in the level of training Chi can enter the secret land. Was he trying to cheat her when he asked for the help of her master in the first place? In hindsight, Lin Liuran is surprised by the unpredictable man. From this moment, she will not believe everything that comes out of Wen Guanjing's mouth.